Okay, I'll just pick up where I left off. I was editing the cover and um, talked about how you could insert a photo and then you do have to include a brief s summary here or else uh, you won't be able to publish the guide. Uh, once the cover is the right way you would like it. And we've already talked about supplies. You can then add steps. When you click on add step, you can either um, add a photo and then annotate it with text or just text. Uh, most of them would be with pictures. Um, again, though, it would make me choose a, a picture, so I'll just do a text one here. Um, you have up until up to 200 characters to type, and um, as far as the text is concerned. Um, once you have, crea have started creating steps, it's really easy to rearrange the pages. Um, it's like, you know, moving around uh, icons on a desktop, you just slide them around. Uh, when the guide is done, you click review and publish. Uh, review is going to let you look at each of the slides and then ultimately you publish the guide and others can view it and then you can share it. Um, so let's go back to the presentation here. So that's part two. The students would work through the creating a snap guide. Uh, after that task is complete, um, each student group will add their guide to the class laboratory skills wiki. Um, and that so this then each individual student can complete part four, which is to view each guide and provide a thoughtful and meaningful comment. Um, advantages of this project with the current uh, funding issues in education, the SNAP Guide is free. Um, it's also really easy to use. Students can download the app, sign up, and um, start making a guide within a matter of minutes with their cell phone. Um, and that brings up the point of the cell phone. I think another advantage is, especially for high school students, they're using their cell phone as a learning tool, not something that's distracting them in class. Once the guides are created, they're very easy to view on an iPhone, a tablet, or a desktop computer. They're also easy to share on multiple platforms and embed into wikis, websites, and blog posts. Uh, another, app, or another advantage of SnapGuide is very similar to other social applications like Pinterest, Twitter, and Instagram, which teenagers are already uh, very familiar with. Um, these guides are also good for students who are absent because they can access the guides anytime, anywhere and still um, learn these fundamental laboratory skills. Um, they, it's also um, more of a creative process than a paper pencil assessment which increases student engagement and this type of an activity is going to facilitate higher level thinking skills and um, problem solving. Disadvantages, um, I had shown the video step and I did ask my students to incorporate a video step. They are limited to 60 seconds. Um, however, they can trim video right within the app and you could break the, a skill down into two or three steps in order to view the entire process. Um, at this point, um, there is no Android version of the SnapGuide app. I would say most of my students have iPhones, um, but for the few that would have some other type of device, they wouldn't be able to download the application. However, they could still participate and create a guide utilizing the web. Um, another disadvantage, the SnapGuide app and website does not have any privacy settings at this point. Uh, so once you create a tutorial, the SnapGuides are public and can be accessed and viewed by anyone on the site. Uh, so obviously a teacher needs to really do planning and research uh, to prevent any privacy or safety issues. Effective structural strategies included in this lesson um, as students make observations and provide feedback in the form of commenting, they're going to be using critical thinking and communication skills. Uh, when they are observing the images and commenting, it also hones their visual literacy skills. The students will be identifying similarities and differences between different skills and that's going to enhance their understanding of each process. They're also analyzing a skill and summarizing the steps in a process, which enhances their ability to synthesize information and organize it in a way that's meaningful. 
Um, these guides are considered non-linguistic representations of a process, which is going to enhance students' ability to represent and elaborate on their knowledge. And lastly, this lesson is a cooperative learning experience, which provides students with an opportunity to interact with their peers in a way that enhances learning. Uh, the possibilities for SNAPGUIDE are endless. Um, teachers of all content areas can create guides for students on a new resource or technology tool they'll be using in class. As far as specific content er or areas, English teachers can use the tool to describe a writing process. A physical education teacher can demonstrate a new uh, athletic skill. Mathematics teachers can introduce a mathematical operation. I also think um, administrators should look into SNAPGUIDE to create guides uh, for professional development and training teachers on different technology tools. And there are already so many uh, SNAP guides on the site. There are thousands of them that you can browse through by category, so it could also be a research tool. That brings me to my second lesson, which is utilizing the SNAP guide to chronicle a chemistry laboratory investigation. Um, as far as a description of the lesson plan, although paper and pencil lab reports are an important part of a chemistry class, um, the traditional reports are typically dictated by the teacher, and there's not a lot of room for student creativity and reflection. Um, and so, uh, and even if we do have them work in groups, which can be an effective strategy, um, many times the most confident or capable, capable student does all of the work and the other people in the group just copy the information. Uh, so in using SNAPGUIDE, this will address these issues as opposed to a traditional lab report. Um, they are going to work in groups to create a SNAP guide to chronicle a lab investigation. And then individually, they will summarize the experience and reflect on what they've learned as part of a blog post. Um, I believe this blog post will allow the teacher to assess student comprehension um, better than paper and pencil evaluation. Uh, the technology involved is exactly the same as lesson number one. Uh, skills and knowledge required by the teacher. Again, many of these have already been stated in the previous lesson. The only additional skill would be experience creating and implementing student reflective blogs. Uh, the student skills and prior knowledge, again, are consistent with lesson number one. Two additional things, the students will need skills in setting up a blog and creating a blog post, and then ultimately embedding their guide into the post. Uh, what are the students going to produce? The small groups will create a SNAP guide chronic chronicling a chemistry lab investigation. And then after that is complete, individual students will create a blog post where they will embed the guide, summarize the activity, reflect on what they have learned, and include a link to a relevant resource. Um, this is broken up into two parts, this lesson, part one, each of the small student groups will carry out a chemistry lab investigation and create a SNAP guide of the experience. That SNAP guide should include a list of the materials, pictures and or video uh, and description of each step, and then a minimum of one slide for each component of the scientific method. So a problem or question slide, hypothesis, procedure, observations and data, analysis, and conclusion. In the second part of the project, um, when the guide is complete, individual students will create a blog post on their student reflective blog, embed the SNAP guide, um, summarize their experience, reflect on what they've learned, and then provide a link to a relevant resource. Advantages of the project are going to be the same as um, lesson number one. And uh, in addition, there's going to be, as I mentioned earlier, a more comprehensive assessment of student understanding on the reflective blog post as opposed to a uh, traditional paper pencil laboratory report. Um, again, disadvantages are going to be consistent with lesson one. One additional disadvantage, the guide is going to be created under one student's account, um, one SNAP guide account, so it might lead to some confusion as far as embedding it in the guide. But I think with proper planning, that disadvantage can be overcome. 
Um, effective instructional strategies, again, many of these are similar to lesson one. Um, additional would be um, the students prior to doing the laboratory investigation will make and then test up an, a hypothesis, which is going to enhance their understanding of and ability to use their own knowledge by chronicling their investigation on SnapGuide and summarizing their experience in the blog post. They're going to uh, improve their ability to synthesize information and organize it in a way that's meaningful. And lastly, by writing a reflection on their experience and an impression of the subject, they are practicing uh, clear, concise writing skills. I believe this lesson can also be applied in multiple disciplines and areas. Um, specific content areas, English teachers can use it for expository writing. Physical education teachers could have student pairs chronicle a sports skill and then analyze and reflect on their performance. Math students can analyze and summarize their problem solving technique. Um, students could analyze a recipe in home economics or the steps in how to build a birdhouse and woodshop. As far as outside of the classroom, I believe SnapGuide could be used to showcase uh, a musical performance, athletic competition, or a community service project. And then the guide could be embedded in a school blog post to summarize the event.